Oh, yes. This is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. And today's show, sponsored by Cheshire Impact, on a mission to help people maximize their use of Pardot and Salesforce. CheshireImpact.com. Bam. Hey, everyone. Before we get started with the show, I'm excited to announce two things. First is that my book, Marketing Automation Unleashed, is now live on Amazon. So go get it. The second thing is we have a new sponsor, Qualified.com. I'm going to tell you about them in the next couple seconds here and also how you can get a free copy of my book thanks to them. So who are these people? Well, Qualified is the number one live chat and chatbot platform for Salesforce and Pardot. Sales reps can have real-time, personalized conversations with who? Your hottest website visitors. So I want you to know, I don't just partner with anyone. I genuinely love these guys, and the platform, we use it at my company. Our sales team loves it. We've closed a lot of deals based on it, Um, had a lot of great conversations with prospects too. So, you know, a lot of marketing these days is, what, hurry up and wait right? Fill out this form. And then if we pass you over to sales, maybe you'll swap six emails with them to find a good time to talk. But what if a prospect is doing research right now and they would chat now? Why not give them the opportunity? So the best part is your company actually decides what leads are worth a live chat. There's a lot of noise out there. You don't want to talk to everyone. So Qualified actually connects to Salesforce and Pardot and it's able to pull in lead and contact information so you can specifically know if you're talking to a VIP, a VP, a decision maker. It's really kind of like magic. Now, if you don't know who someone is, well, what happens then, Casey? Well, that's when the bots come in handy. Chat bots can then ask you know, questions to further qualify a lead, find out if maybe this is someone you do want to talk to. And they can book meetings while your sales team is out. And they can wake up the next morning with a bunch of meetings on their calendar. Now, here's the promo. If you are a company that wants to give your sales team this ability, right, to be able to talk to decision makers right when they're on your website, do this. Go to qualify.com and start a chat, right? They use their own tool, of course. Start a chat. Tell them that Casey sent you. If you have Salesforce Pardot, when you schedule and then do a demo, they will send you a free copy of my book, Marketing Automation Unleashed. Not bad, right? Well, it's only while supplies last. So, Hop on this thing today. And that's it for sponsors. Let's get to the show. Oh, yeah. It is Friday. Happy Friday. And if you're listening to this and it's not Friday, well, you get to have Friday again. It's allowed Friday. by a government agency to make today a Friday. So happy Friday. This is going to be a fun one. We're going to have so much fun. My guest today is hilarious. We were having so much fun. We didn't even hit record. Half the show has already happened, and you'll never know what happened. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> it was great, she, guys. <laughs> it was. It was so fantastic. And now, who is she? What does she do? She is a lead generation. She is a marketing strategist. And she has a lot of fun doing what she does. She's, she's hip to the planning. She's hip to preparation. We're going to talk about how to really be an intentional marketer. It's very insightful. And has this sort of natural creative direction. So she infuses all of her marketing with that creativity, the, art, the artistry of it all. So we're going to talk about how we can infuse that too. And she's the director of marketing at Spencer Trask and Company, Julie Falsitano. How are you? Hey, doing good, Casey. How are you? Now, how, how did I do on your name? Did I, did I mess it up? You knocked its socks off. You did oh, great. Oh, good. You know, <laughs> people won't even realize that we spent five minutes talking about how to say it. It uh, might have been 10, but I won't say. It, I'm sorry. It might have been 10. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you're here now, and you've been introduced, and yes. I want to just open the floodgates of your knowledge. So this is our marketing leadership series. Mm-hmm. We're talking to marketing leaders, learning from them, about like the way they're looking at things and the strategies of what they're looking at. So what I want to do is pass you this. It's an imaginary Thor's hammer because the real one is at the office. (laughs) And here you go. You can't get coronavirus from it. So take that. There you go. Take it. Oh. Uh, oh. There you go. Okay, you got it. Okay, you got Thor's hammer. Crash, crush, smash for me some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception that just drives you crazy. Okay. Um, well, I 
work with a lot of salespeople and I work with all business people. I have a very, very small, humble marketing team. Um, so one thing that really grinds my gears, I'll say, is grind people, grind of people not appreciating how much time and effort goes into marketing. You know, yes. I think people really expect marketers to have all the answers up front. I think that's like what we're known for. But really, so much prep work goes at the front of it. So much research. It can't get done in a week. I mean, you have to look at the market. You have to look at competitive. I mean, you have to really be as a marketer, as entrenched as the business, as a founder, as a CEO, you have to know it forwards and backwards. And then how do you get people interested? It is a long, arduous process, which I love and live for, as do all of you guys as well. Um, but hate that. I hate when people try to rush marketing. Like, give it to me tomorrow. Give me my 9,000 leads tomorrow. Yeah. Right. It, don't worry about prepping that AdWords <laughs> campaign or that thousands of dollars you're going to spend on that hokey thing. Like, yeah, yeah, just go ahead and do it, right? Or, just do it. Yeah. yeah it, you're going to, you know, and it's going to work and you're going to have it for tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Or, or sell the product. I don't sell product. I am not a salesperson. Sales, marketing, two very, very different functions. I think people, especially small business owners, which is totally fine, but I think there's not enough talk about what separates a sales from marketing. Salespeople, they need someone to set it up and then the the salesperson knocks it out of the park. Yeah. We're like the wingman. Yeah. Uh, Wait, who's the wingman though? Marketer's the wingman. Okay, because sales is going to spike the ball. Right. So it's like we're in Top Gun and okay. marketing is goose. Okay. I never saw it, Top Gun. Oh my gosh. You haven't seen Well, the next one's coming out. You can't not. So I, I, now I guess you know, I have. You've got to. plenty of time. You just plenty of time. <laughs> iTunes, Netflix, whatever. Oh, yeah. Pick your poison. Okay. Top Gun. There's two guys flying in this jet. Yeah. And one is this guy you never heard of. And I can't tell you what happens. I won't spoil it for you. Thank you. Everyone else knows what's happening, but I can't. And then the other one is top is Tom Cruise, who's yes. like Tom Cruise. So marketing's like, and they play beach volleyball, you know, they sets it up, and yes. Tom Cruise is like smash, even though he's the short guy. No one realizes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's five foot zero or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, That's so yeah. it's a team sport. It's a um, team sport. But back to your your first thing, because we'll dissect all these things. But like the idea yeah. of you can't rush marketing. Oh Why? my gosh. Where does that where does that myth come from? Why do people end up thinking that? I think a lot of times people oversimplify what marketing can do and what it's capable of. You know, marketing is more than just setting up a website and setting up social channels and you know getting people excited. That's part of it. Um, If you're a very small startup, that's probably a great first step, but there's so much that goes into it. There's lots of different channels. Email marketing in its own has so much work that goes into it. All that automation can't have it unless someone implements that. And before that, there's a strategy that goes hand in hand with that. Yeah, I like the idea, you know, a lot of times we get distracted by the tech and we want to do that first, but I think really strategy should come first, right? And then exactly process maybe next and then like tech comes last. Like we'll yes. build it once we know what we actually want to do over here. Right. No, that's exactly right. And strategy takes a long time to get through, you know, and it, yeah. that's collaborative process. I mean, I work for a small company and we work with startups, so you know, it's not like we have all these different levels to go through. I'm working with the CEO of the company and he's like, just, I don't know. I I have an invention and I want it to go to market. I don't know where I want it to go, but here it is. So much goes into bringing that company to market. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so how do you prep? What's the best way to prepare? Let's say given you've been given some time or you're trying to fight for the fact that you need some time. What do you do with it? You got X number of days to prep for this marketing you're going to do? I would say I'd first get all my research done. So I would ask a lot of questions about who do you think, you know, your competitors are? What do you think you mean to consumers? What challenge are you providing a solution for? Um, In terms of your top three competitors, are there other ones around in different spaces? Um, 
you know, just basically really getting a lay of the land. And that usually takes, I mean, it could take anywhere from a week to four weeks, depending on the company and depending if it's a blue space, so no other competitors. People always, and especially, so what our company does, we deal with a lot of firsts or new mm. industries, which yeah, is yeah. what they call blue ocean versus red ocean, where red ocean is a lot of competitors. Oh, because the fish are all eating each other? Exactly. I love that analogy. Yeah. So Blue Ocean, it sounds great. Hey, I have no competitors. But the thing about competitors is it shows that there's a need. There's a need in the marketplace. So Blue Ocean, a ton more work goes into that, actually. Your competitors can give you goalposts, honestly. So without that, it's a a lot harder. (laughs) Yeah, because no one's even looking for what you do. Right, exactly. Like an SEO campaign. Now you're thinking, now you're in the best source. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have to think totally outside the box. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? And it was just talking to um, uh, someone awesome from Sixth Sense yesterday. And she was saying how, um, like, I was like, well, what does that even, she's talking about the voodoo science of intent data. And I was like, mm. what category is that even? Yeah. And it's kind of in flux. It's kind of this like account based orchestration thing which i would never search for because i don't even know enough that it's happening so (laughs) it it was kind of funny where it was like hmm what is even the category and i know she's got some competitors already so at least it's not like i don't think it's blue ocean but it but but yeah the birds like you and i don't necessarily know what to go search for right so it was was lisa she was um uh sherapata she was fantastic but she would school me on intent data but i was like huh even knowing more about it now, I don't even know what I'd search for or, or to know to search for. So to your point, you got to yeah, know what the lay of the land is. Really know exactly. what kind of a game are you fighting here? Are you fighting your, you know, are you in a death match with your competitors or yes. are you just trying to get attention? Like, look at us. We're exactly. Yeah. Or do you want to sell to competitors? Are you maybe a feature ad instead Ooh. of a true competitor? That oh, is a very, very interesting space to be in. Feature ad. I mean, that's kind of out of the box, like actually working with your competitors. Well, yeah, because a lot of these, a lot of these big companies that end up acquiring startups, that startups now often function as the new R and D department. <laughs> right. Because yeah, because it's like they're small, they're agile, they're forced to know everything, <laughs> like beyond right. even their skill set. Right. Um, so bringing in a startup uh, totally just gives you. New channels, new audience segments, uh, totally new uh, opportunities. Yeah, I like that. So you do the research, you get a lay of the land, you understand the challenges, the solutions, yep. uh, where you're at. You compile all this data. You got like nine stacks of books in your arms and right. coffee on top. Like, what do you? What comes next? Oh gosh! After that, um, I usually will present that to the uh, CEO or the decision makers in the business because again, it is collaborative. Nothing. There's facts in there, but how you present those facts and manipulate them to work for you—that you, you know—that's a that's a story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't manipulate are manipulate. Facts. <laughs> oh, I manipulate them all the time. We're you have marketing. To. We don't manipulate anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so um after that i mean then you just bunker down and get to the strategy you know you have to figure out you know never lose sight of your goals i feel like when you get mm. so deeply entrenched in like s- seemingly silly kpis like why what do we even care about this email like when you lose sight of your goals the whole house of cards collapses mm. so you know, yeah hearing that i i, I feel a little guilty because i feel like i've done that even recently Right, you get yeah. so caught up, especially if you're talking about the tech. Like, yeah, well, how would you create that? Well, let's create an automation rule, or or, or would you do something different? Would you use some some right. logic? You get all like all about the tech, but you're like, wait a minute, or all about the copy. Yeah, the other day I remember it was with the group. We were arguing over like, do you say world class or do you say some other word? <laughs> you're thinking, um, you yeah. were like arguing over the word, and it's like, wait, yeah, yeah. what are you even trying to do? Like, why yes. are we even talking? Does this even Yes. To the goal, and I'm thinking, oh no, what is the goal even? Yes. And you gotta yes. remind yourself of that, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm laughing because I know exactly what you mean. I, you're like so deep into, let's say, like a, a strategy document, and you're like, is this even how I spell this word? Like, right. where even am I? <laughs> like, this is, yeah. can I use the word this way? That's why you always have your goals up front. I mean, anytime you're running a meeting, onboarding people, especially, but even if like, 
I don't know, say you're three or four weeks into a campaign, it always helps setting up the meeting with, this is why we're here today. This yeah. is where we came from. And this is the purpose of the meeting so that we can go to place X. Right. This is the purpose yeah. of the meeting. I love that. Like there's so much, I mean, we can always learn, but that's why I love th this podcast because I'm continually learning, like have your goals up front. How many times have I had like a marketing and sales alignment call and right. not had goals up front? I think goals can be scary because yeah, yeah. now you have something that you could fail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? for sure. Marketing, yeah. we can kind of just cruise like we're in Waikiki, be like yeah. Aloha. And yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, just, yeah. we're, you know, oh, we, we don't do leads. We just kind of brand yeah, impressions yeah. and, right, right. you know, but you, you set a goal. Now it's like you could be hitting it or not hitting it, but I think yeah. you can do that. Yeah, you have to do that and making sure that you have real specific objectives on how to get to that goal. Because like, I'm one of those people where if I have a mess handed to me, like I'm a super organized, if I have a mess handed to me, it's going to stress me the F out. <laughs> like, yeah. It just will. So you really have to just start with top of the pyramid. What do I want to achieve? What is, why am I even uh, engaging in a new business? Why am I even oh, talking to a marketing person? Get that done. And then, all right, how am I going to get? there there's my objectives all right how am I going to get there well here's my tactics and then you get your benchmarks your KPIs I mean the the more that you organize all this stuff that's running around in your head and keep that with you from meeting to meeting if you're in project management or leading a team it's just you need that as your guidebook do you what kind of goal do you do you set like a overall goal for revenue or do you have like an MQL goal or like a leads goal? Is there, is there one or several? Like what, how do you, what's your best yeah, yeah. advice? I, I mean, it depends on where you are in the company and who you're working with. Again, I'm always with um, startups. So really they'll, they'll have real broad and generic goals. Like they're like, I just want this to go into market and be successful. Uh -huh. Right. So it's like, well, okay. Next question, what's success to you? Is yeah. success a buyout? Like, do you just want to sell the company and you want to get rich? Because that's okay. But I, as a marketer, I need to know that, right? Do you want to save the world? Do you want to save lives? I want to save 10 million lives. Or I want to save, like, when people say I want to be successful, that's not the answer. It's, it's, the, it's the prompt for a question to dig deeper. Totally. And you know, if you save the cheerleader, you save the world. Yeah, exactly. No, literally, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I like this. What is success to you? Set some goals. Like I, I feel like I've set some in the past, but then they've like been in some doc in Google drive that I haven't yeah. revisited. And mm -hmm. I really need to have that like out in front and, yep. and, and also some measurable ones. Like we talk about like smart goals and whatnot. Yep. I, I need to like make sure that we've got some smart goals in marketing. So yeah, we could miss them, but at least we got a target we're pushing toward as yes. opposed to just kind of hanging out, not knowing if we are or not. Yes. And if you miss them, there's value in that too. True. Like, let's say you wanted to have a million followers on your Facebook page and you were like, shit short of that. You only had a hundred thousand. Well, that's right. really interesting. Actually, That's a lot of followers on Facebook though. I mean, a hundred thousand is pretty good. It's a ton. Well, let's say you're like, hey, man, I wanted to be a household name, and that was my five-year goal, and we're missing those uh, those checkpoints. Yeah. Okay, that's super valuable. Like, you don't, like, I feel like sometimes people, like, hide that, or they're like, oh, shit, and it's like, no, man, like, that's actually a data point for you, because now, you know, Facebook isn't working for you. Maybe the answer is to try other channels. Maybe the answer is to look at your social media strategy. You know, yeah. there's, it's... There's really no wrong answers with marketing as long as you have data to back you up. Right. I love that. Data to back you up. But um, yeah, you mentioned like don't hide or like don't hide the misses, you know, yeah, like, yeah. let them be out there. And it right. got me really thinking that, um, you know, the, to your point, there's value in missing the goals because if you miss them and you let people know about it, yep. you need to change. You probably need to change some strategies up. Exactly. And in case you're resistant to change, because I know I don't like change, <laughs> sharing your data with other people, they might help motivate you to change. Yes. As painful as it is, if other yes. people see your data and you like keep doing the same thing, they're like, uh, Casey, you keep doing the same thing, even though yeah, yeah. these goals, how about we mix it up a little bit? You're like, oh, thank you so much. I yes. needed that. I should totally. be, I should be changing things up. 
Exactly. And I think the more, the more transparent you are with others, like I've, you know, plenty of times in my career I've been like, man, I, I, I fucked up here. And when I confide in that in someone else, they're like, I actually did something way worse two days ago. So Uh, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like you don't have to be afraid in marketing. You, we never do anything at random. It's, it's, you can use intuition. I think that's a very powerful tool. If you have it, use it, um, back it up with data though, for sure. Um, but it's marketing is not scary. It is all fact-based database. It's agile things to digital. I mean, advertising in the sixties, I mean, you you True. knew you knew if your billboard worked if your sales went up in six months maybe but maybe, maybe. it was something else you know what I'm saying yeah who knows but now with digital there's there's nothing to fear nothing to hide behind it's it's all good anything I can like be that fixed. yeah it's like it's like a it's like a no fear approach to marketing yeah you know? exactly in like the data backs you up and yep and it's like it's empirical it's not your idea my idea it's like right. it's not. I suck. You're great. We're bad. Like right. it's like no. This is a laboratory. We're trying different things in the test tubes. Like, yes. and the end result is what's important as a team. I like that, and yes. I love that you have this sort of like this courage about you, and you're like brave, yes. and you're like let's do it. <laughs> you have data. Yep. You might you know mess up or this or that. Be super transparent. I love that you're like transparent, yeah. and that you tell a secret, and someone else is like, yeah, I did worse. <laughs> have you seen that show, Impractical Jokers? No, I've heard oh of it. Oh my though. gosh, another show you got to see. <laughs> yes. You're stuck inside. I got it. TV. Okay. Yeah. There's a bunch. It's what is the introduction? Um, a group of friends uh, compete to embarrass each other. I love it already. And and so one of the the skits they do, they're in a park, and you have to sit down next to a stranger, tell them a secret, which everyone else makes up for you, which is horrible. <laughs> um, like. I looked up and a bird pooped in my mouth and I, and I liked it or something just wacky. And <laughs> yeah. you have to tell that to the stranger and then you have to get them to tell you a secret back. Oh, and sometimes people are like, no, thanks. And then you lose, you get a red X or they, or they say something like secret. Yeah. There's some, been some crazy ones like, Oh, I, I really don't like this or that. You're like, Oh God, it's your national television. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're right. Like be open and transparent. Other people might respond to that. Yeah. It's contagious for sure. It's contagious. I I think, you know, another thing too is I think so many people get guarded and not enough people talk about that, you know, like at the end of the day, if all you care about is the work, you're good, (laughs) you know? Well, you know, I I think the, the fear, right. If you break it down, um, marketing can get the ax, you know, from a CEO that doesn't understand it you know, yeah. or if sales is hating on you, but yeah, I guess that that's true of everybody. So, you know, like exactly. oh, marketing, Hey, be crazy, be courageous, be brave. Right. You might get fired. You might get this. I've been fired. Hello people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, right. but, but then you end up being better off after that. So go for it. Go for it. Thousand yeah. percent. And like the more, that. the more you think like the business owner, or again, it's like whoever, I always speak in terms of startups and just cause that's my experience. Yeah, but no, do it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, if you're, you're thinking of them first and you're providing their value higher than just promotion, like maybe tweaking your business model here or things like that, which as a marketer, you really should be doing, you know, your whole existence is to sell the company, sell the product, whatever it is. You mm-hmm. should be thinking like that business person, you're, you won't be the first to get the ax, I promise you. Because now you're not just the, the loudmouth promoter, you know, like so many people think sales uh, marketing people are, excuse me. Now you're the business partner. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, you're, you're a partner in the, in the whole situation as opposed right. to just being like a, in the periphery. You're like exactly. meshed into the sales and marketing product. I like that. You embed yeah. yourself in there because right. you're, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Instead of sort of backing off to the side and like not, you know, rogering up for any goals, you just like dive in there. And you're like, <laughs> Here's my goals. I'm being super transparent. Yeah, I, yeah right. You jump in, like hold, hold your nose, get the water yeah, yeah. up your nose, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I love it. Yeah. And it's like chlorine. It burns. It burns. Yeah, it burns so good. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, summer vacation. One day. Uh, maybe maybe five years from now. Who knows? Yeah, I'm just gonna fill my basement with water and. <laughs> call the insurance company it'll yeah. be <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, so there's no windows down here so if i stay in here too long i turn into a bit of a vampire 
you know. <laughs> I'm already so, there. Are you? You're already yeah, there. Yeah. Vastly. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've been stuck inside for a while, huh? Oh, I know. I, I saw this meme that was hilarious. It was saying like, like COVID has turned our house into Vegas. Like no one knows what time it is and drinks ah. are flowing at any time. I'm like, that is true. <laughs> like, it is. Yeah. yeah. Especially in this, uh, I call this Studio B in the coronavirus bunker. Uh, Ooh. Down here. Um, I like it. I don't have windows. So I don't know what time it is. Yesterday it was raining. I, I came upstairs and I was like, oh, it's pouring out. No idea. <laughs> No idea. You're right. It's like Vegas. I yeah. should pump oxygen into my basement. Oh, yeah. that would be pretty sweet. And then I need the sounds of the um, the casino in the background, like the ling 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 ling. ling. I the just sounds of regret. Oh, the sounds of regret <laughs> and despair. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I need that just playing on soft, the soft hum of that behind me. Oh, like, Let's go. Put it all on black, baby. Let's do this. <laughs> doing shots. Yeah. Right. Doing your marketing campaigns like yeah, yeah. roulette table. We'll go, exactly. We could do this webinar or we could do this webinar. <laughs> yeah, Let's right. roll the dice. Let's roll it up. See what happens. We should, but we shouldn't do that. Or is that what we're saying? We should plan and we should pick. Or all is it okay? kidding aside. Yeah. We have to plan. Okay. Data drives decisions. Yeah. And it doesn't happen tomorrow. We need some time. We need to make sure you get the time. In absolutely. Absolutely. And there was another myth that I wanted to bust because yeah. this really gets on my nerves. Um, Gen Z. I'm here. I'm here to be their advocate. I am not Gen Z, for the record. I am Gen a millennial. Z, right. Gen okay. Z, the babies. They are, um, I think, the older ones, maybe the middle of the older ones. They're starting to uh, graduate from college now. And, you know, I, th I think when people, especially middle management, see someone graduating from college, they're like, oh, you know nothing, young grasshopper. You know, right. and there's, there's some truth to that for sure. I mean, they've never had their ass kicked in a board meeting. Sure. <laughs> they haven't been in the trenches, so to speak, yet. But there is really so much value in having a fresh perspective. I mean just you know neur neural pathways right it's tangible like when you yeah. think things it actually engraves grooves into your brain if you yeah. keep doing the same things you know you're just you're not exploring like new ways of thinking having someone fresh out of college they know all the best practices like at, at a 22 year old sure. what's what's a good conversion rate you know on a e-commerce website or whatever oh blah 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 that's valuable. That's sure. valuable. You know, I mean, they have so much information at their disposal as well. I, I you know, don't, don't not kids, people. They are our future. <laughs> and yeah. They yeah. We get kind of like, you know, oh, that generation. But then we, it's like a cycle that everyone's doing that. And then yeah. like, we were that. Yeah. And now we're in the middle of that. And then eventually we'll be like the old people have been like, well, I don't want an iPad in my brain. I want to be uh, yeah. onto it. Like, what's this? brain ipad thing <laughs> exactly. that sounds terrible like exactly where's my freedom people like um <laughs> you're right though so like we, we got to make sure yeah I, I think it's it's like this humility and there's yeah something about just knowing that other people now you're you're giving them credit for knowing shit coming out of school yeah. i don't know i'm the opposite where i'm like you probably don't know anything but that could be just as good right not yes. knowing to your point you're not stuck in some rut or routine you yep. may not know anything, and that's okay because you might be asking all the right questions. Sometimes just being asked a question is enough to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, Casey, yeah. what are your marketing goals right now? Uh, okay, I'll get back to you. I need to go work on that. You yes, know, like, exactly. I was asked the question. I need, yep. I need, you need Gen Z to ask you the question. You need Gen Z because actually one of my uh, interns, he is so great. And little plug for him, Brad. He's shout amazing. Out. What's his name? Shout out, Brad Millstone. Brad, Ooh. what's up? He's fantastic. He asks me such smart questions. And I'm like, you know, love that. Love your enthusiasm. I'm going to get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've done that several <laughs> times. And I'm a planner, too, you know. He's, they, they ask great questions. They know that they don't know what they don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and they're energetic. I mean, I love having that energy in the office. Yeah. Uh, last summer, yeah. I... I uh, participated in this uh, discovery internship program based out of New York City, which was fantastic. Um, and I had two interns who were in high school. And I was kind of petrified because, you know, first of all, I'm responsible for like actual children now because they're 17. So that made me nervous. Oh, no, they're 17? Yeah. So I was like, oh my responsible God. I'm like, for them? and they're I'm in like, New York City? That's what I mean. Did you I literally... tape the doors? Have you I heard watched... of that? 
no. I mean, I walked them to their train. Like, I literally was like, here, oh, okay. here, children. Oh, it wasn't an overnight. No, no, no. Oh, thank God. Yeah. No, they, they went somewhere else. I, okay, <laughs> I don't good. know. They had, like, a dorm or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it was a big responsibility, you know, and I, they needed so much direction. But they were fun, you know, yeah. and they asked interesting questions that no marketing person or anyone else in the business realm would ask. And I just love that energy. And I just, you know, don't, don't be, uh, don't be down on the, on the youngins. That's all I have to say. They're great in their own way. You just have to figure out where to use them and where to plug them in. Uh, that's a good point. Like where yeah. to utilize their strengths, where do you need the questioning to happen? Um, right. And yeah, the energy and just kind of feed yes. off of that. You know, I had an awesome conversation with uh, someone named Zoe today. We were talking about webinars. Talk, we were talking to a company about like, how do we step our webinars up? We won't actually do these. We haven't really been doing them. But now with coronavirus, we're like all in. Yeah. And she was asking some amazing questions. One was like, you know, like, okay, how do you get people to attend? And I was like, that. That is the question that you're working <laughs> yeah. on for the next several years. That's what, that's what we're, we're working on. It's like, yeah. how do you? You'll get them to register. Yep. How do you get them to actually show up? Mm -hmm. They may or may not do it. Maybe you just, they just get the recording. But we were just kind of talking through. Like, you know, yeah. you got to send an email. You got to talk about what they need, what they want. But it was like awesome. She was asking the right questions. She graduated in May. And wow. she already was throwing out like gated content and SEO. And I was like, damn, you damn, know the girl. words already. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's really exciting to hear. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, you know, what is, so is, is there a why? And it, do you know all the different ones in our millennials before Z? The, there's like the generations? <laughs> yeah, those different like letters and stuff. There, yes. Okay, yes. Gen X, I think they are 40 to 55. I'm doing it too while you're doing that. Yeah, I think so. And then Gen Y, yeah, those are millennials. Millennials are also Gen Y, a little fun fact. Uh, okay, baby, right, to your point, baby boomer, 44, 64, okay. Gen X, 65 to 79, interesting. Gen X, no. Oh, oh. This, this thing says millennial is like 1980 to 94, but I'm calling bullshit on that. Yeah. Because there's a difference. I'm going bullshit on that too, because baby boomers, they're like in their 70s now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like this says millennials is 80 and 90. I would chop that in half. I would say the 80s call us like Nintendo children or something. I don't know. But but like the 90s, I would give them the millennial thing. I agree. It's bad, but like I, I, I remember a time of not having the internet and then yeah. getting the internet and being like, whoa. Nope. You know, and nope. whereas people that came after that are like, yo, this is, we're always connected, right? I don't know. I remember going places without a phone and, oh, yeah. you know, yep. and using a map with a highlighter. And AAA <sighs> used to, like, give you highlighted <laughs> maps for your, your road trip somewhere, oh, you know. God. No All thanks. That. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to revisit that. Bad times. It's true. It's true. <laughs> maps with a highlighter. <laughs> Hell no. No, thank you. Remember the directions we'd have to do? So they'd say, like, how do you get to your house? How do you get to your office? Okay, well, three lights, take a yes. left oh my at God. the Sunoco. And then I was always so bad at those. You get the like, Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm always so bad at those. It was like I would panic. Like I, remember, like, I remember one specific incident. That's how bad it was. Someone was at a red light. And they're like, I'm lost. How do I get to 7-Eleven? And it was, like, not far at all. But I was like, oh. Uh, uh, right, uh, like, oh. and they just drive away. I was like, "Oh my god, what an idiot!" It's true. It, it's and hard. you couldn't just call. You couldn't just call. Right? Oh my god, I know. And but, we we didn't get a computer until like way too late. My poor sister, she was oh, no. yeah, way too late. There was no reason for it. You know, I think maybe my parents thought it was like a phase. That could be. <laughs> Did they think it was the devil? <laughs> they were just like, I don't really get why we need this because we have a typewriter. Your sister can use a typewriter. I had a typewriter. Was it electric or like? It was other... electric okay. with a, I think it had like a backspace button too. Like it could, I forget. It was pretty complicated, that typewriter. They were wow. really proud of it. So I didn't have a computer until I was, God, a family computer until maybe I was like 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had like Apple IIe's and stuff, um, which I, I tinkered around on as a kid. Yeah. But really, it didn't the world didn't open, the sky didn't open up until it was like Mac, 
yeah. like the Macintosh with America Online, and then yeah. like, oh my gosh, the CDs. Do you remember the CDs? Yes. Oh my god, kids will never appreciate going to a grocery store. You're leaving, and it's like a wall of CDs, and you're like, yes, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> remember that? Oh my god, yeah. I used to hoard those. They used to charge by the hour on America mm-hmm. Online. Imagine the internet by hour, right? Like we're having issues with gigabytes or paying for data or data data's free now, unless you're in yeah. Canada, in which case you pay an arm and leg for it. But like, yeah, yeah. Um, hello, an, an hour goes by quickly on the internet. <laughs> like, yeah, it does. I used to get in like trouble. It's like probably what the kids before us would like the long distance calls. Right, this was right. like us being like, you sp- <laughs> you spent eighty dollars on AOL last month. You're like, I don't know how I did that. Like, I was yeah. just chatting with my friends. Exactly. Exactly. It's like I was in a, a chat room. I I don't I don't even know what happened. Chat rooms were safe, kids. There was a period where chat yeah. rooms were relatively safe, and it was just uh, someone looking for a friend. It is <laughs> it's a lot scarier now than it and used there, to be. There was be. the ASL. The age, oh, yes! sex, and location. Age, sex, location. 16 male New Hampshire. What's <laughs> up, everybody? I always lied and said I was like two years older, which like turned my like 13 to like 15. But I oh, thought it was so cool. One of those troublemakers. Did you ever hang out with like Chris Hansen or anyone like that? <laughs> no. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this is like the generation thing, and it's fun chatting about because it's yeah. like every generation has those things. That, and I think we said it where we're like, you know, they don't appreciate now. Mm-hmm. the craziness because we didn't have x i think every generation does that yeah and so and so too. i think we could probably learn something from the people that didn't even have what we had like yeah. you like color on your tv or like <laughs> like it's you know true. we didn't have any of that stuff that's um, so true you like anesthesia at the dentist like <laughs> god <laughs> get in line um but like yeah this that we need to have that continual like snowball of gratitude as we go yes. along and, and i like how your like point that. ties into that where it's like Every group, maybe because they don't appreciate some things, have a different point of view, we can automatically assume that they might have a different question or a question we never thought yeah, of. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And even um, when I was younger, I was in my early 20s, I worked at a camera store. And okay. um, I used to help people with pictures and retouching and all that fun stuff. And yeah. it was the first time I saw little kids reacting weird with things and i'll give you context for that so like we had a a magazine in the store and there was a little baby and she kept trying to like click it like it was an ipad and i was like whoa (laughs) like that blew my mind i couldn't believe it and i think that's really interesting too you know and it it makes you think about design like what cues was she responding to that looked like a hyperlink right that's sort of oh yeah right right fascinating and they just pick up they pick up those tools and they're just like blah 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 yeah yeah and i also had a lot of um seniors coming in who were like I have all these great pictures on my phone, but I want to get them out. And, you know, they didn't know how to use a computer very well. And I really had to train myself how to like walk it back. Cause like, we're so used to iconography, iconography, you know what I mean? You're so used to that little envelope is your email and that little, that's the play button. But that is a language that we actually learned at some point, you know? And I think we forget that and people get lost on the tails, the head and tails of the generations. But I think it's not to jump all over, but if you're thinking about design, you have to really roll it back and think about, all right, what's my audience thinking about? What what are their interests? What does their life look like? Because that will absolutely inform your design. Right. And, yeah. and you're right. There are these unwritten rules of design. Yeah. Yeah. where like my kids are playing dragon city on the ipad which nice. gets kind of com- it's like farmville with dragons people really you know but like um it gets complicated but they know they've somehow learned yes um that the red x will close that window yes um, yes this other thing will do that like and then right. the home button will get them out of it like they yeah, just yeah. sort of learn probably by just doing just by doing exactly that was like when i first learned i love reddit now i'm such a reddit fan oh my god what's the scoop on that right because i've definitely checked out a couple posts they often will have the answer to a question Mm -hmm. that i'm looking for but what's the gist with reddit like what's the oh hmm well they have so many different like hyper hyper specialized communities 
that you just like you feel heard <laughs> I'll just say it that way like wow. there's, there's this one group um, or community I guess it's called that my brother-in-law introduced me to called we want plates and it's literally just a whole community where they post pictures where like they got served a sandwich on a shovel and they're like what the fuck is this or they got a drink in a fishbowl that's actually a little bit more normal but people right. are like what the fuck and it's like man like shameful you know or like uh, oh, that's so on it. <laughs> exactly like it really does it and since it's very very stripped down right it's right. it's it doesn't look like Facebook where it's all like colorful and fluffy. Right. It is just like, it is just text and people's usernames. You really, um, it's like the com the good comments shine better in that way. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like how, it's, how, how do they, how do they do that? Because it's like, everything is even everyone is even you don't know if you're talking to um you don't know who you're talking to i guess right. there's no face attached it's total you know anonymous landscape so people i think are braver i think people mm. say things that maybe they wouldn't say otherwise they're more honest i mean you know the, one of my uh, favorite groups um do you know the uh, personality test i think it's mbti where like you figure out if you're an entj or whatever oh so yeah it's like the myers briggs myers briggs thank you yeah That's yeah fun. yeah yeah so i'm an entj which for a point of reference is the same as chef ramsey and um okay. I'm trying to, yeah there's a few others but they can be assholes um <laughs> so, you've been so nice i i just <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong yet. No, I'm so nice. I'm so nice. But they have a very, very specific way about them. And I love reading that community because yeah. this person's like, oh, man, like, I can't stop compulsively organizing things. And I'm like, man, like, I totally feel you on that. It's really fun. It's a fun place. I think it takes a while to get into Reddit. Like, I had to learn how to use it because, like, I'm not as young as I used to be. Right. Um, but once you get in it, I swear you'll love it. A lot of science stuff. I mean, it definitely go on Reddit. Interesting. And stuff. there's a lot of um, – so so that particular – what is it? What do they call the communities? So there's thread? There's Com a I think – thread? Communities? I don't know all the words. I don't. don't. Know the, you don't know the words. <laughs> I'm not that cool. Um, right, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you, if we were a little younger, we'd be like – right now someone's just like – this podcast is too old for me. I can't. I can't stand. I can't. I can't. I don't know uh, all the. You're right. The They're words. called communities. Up and coming communities. Cool. Whew. Um. Yeah. Or yeah, whatever. Awesome. But um. So there's one specifically for ENTJ people. Yes. You can all kind of like get each other. You're like, oh yeah, I know. I know. Oh yeah. Those people oh, yeah. with no plans, they just drive me bonkers. <laughs> It's, yeah. it is the nerdiest community actually maybe that's not true i also there's a curled feetsies community with cats with their curled arms i i get there's real nerdy a curled under. feetsies community curled feetsies you can't say that wrong right because that'd be a different kind of probably yeah <laughs> well okay so i mean but uh, this is interesting right yeah. because there's yeah. so much we can learn from that um totally specialized it's like hyper a lot of you said like hyper specialized yeah. super super niche like real specific or niche, wherever you're from um yeah. or niche wherever you're from but like mm -hmm. it's so focused you're with people who absolutely are on that same page yes and you're all wearing a mask if you will or just none of you have a face so it's like the top comments are actually either really funny or really heartfelt. You know, the, yeah. the top, there's a reason for it. It's content based. It's not like what you look like or where you're from, how many followers you have. That's why it's so great. And, and there's probably like upvoting and that kind of thing. Yeah, with the karma. And I have to say that as a research for, uh, as a research tool for marketers, it's great, but also as a channel, it's great for marketers. So there's another community called AMA. Um, ask me anything. Okay. Um, you know, you could put your CEO out there. Maybe, maybe it is a new industry and you're like, I don't know, I invented a whole new way to administer drugs or whatever it is, you know? Right. 
well, ask me anything. I mean, that's super cool. Now that's a regulated market, but right. you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can find yeah. influencers on there. I, I, I think that we're only just getting to the beginning as marketers of what Reddit can do for our brands and for our, for our people in the brands, brand champions. So yeah. just advice to everyone, if you're into influencer marketing, if that's something for you, even, even B2B, even if you're beyond B2C, Definitely look into Reddit as a tool, not just research, but also as an outreach program. Interesting. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I see there's an advertisement for Sixth Sense on here. Uh, they're following me from yesterday. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, I, I saw on the, the homepage of Reddit, there was like up and coming communities. And I made the mistake of clicking on the one for ramen. Mm-hmm. Just, it's all about ramen. And I'm all just scrolling ramen. by. It's like the best looking ramen bowls ever. I'm thinking I could go for some of that as soon as they let us out oh yeah oh yeah there's a there's one that i love i forget the name of it i'm so so sorry is it secret recipes all the people will ask i want to know how to make the um the roy rogers barbecue sauce please tell me you remember roy rogers oh yeah 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 they were on the interstate yeah Yeah. i love their barbecue sauce so you could post on they still open are they i mean they're (laughs) Okay. But, but you sought out their barbecue sauce. I still, like, if I see, I live in New Jersey. If I see that there's yeah. a Roy Rogers and That's where they were. Yeah. Right, right, right. I will go there. I will drive there. Like, I literally went to a Roy Rogers on a rest stop. This is, you're learning too much about me. Right. No, but, that's, where, that's, where they, that's how I found them. Yeah. They're always at a rest stop in New Jersey. And you're like, <laughs> kind of hungry. What's a Roy Rogers? Uh, <laughs> It was just like this crap roast beef piled on buns. Like there's literally nothing to it, but their barbecue sauce is really something special. So you can go on this Reddit group and ask, how do I make this barbecue sauce? And you will have like 20 people telling you, I've tried this exact recipe 15 times and it's perfect. And you're like, who are you? Like I would have never found this uh, barbecue sauce mastermind unless I posted it on here. Why? Okay. Well, there's a bunch. I looked. Not so much jersey but in philly and maryland maryland you're still there maybe you need yeah. a road trip just to get some barbecue sauce. <laughs> I think so just oh, wait, are you saying it. barbecue sauce like for the roast beef kind of thing i love the barbecue sauce on it like just in general like i'll uh, put okay. it on anything but yeah, yeah. I, I do like those stupid roast beef sandwiches with literally nothing on them i, I don't know why with the right sauce you're right they're magical and you can just eat a thousand of them <laughs> it's kind of like chick-fil-a sauce too though yeah just like wizard sauce wizard sauce see it's real thin and tangy that's the magic okay as a barbecue sauce you're saying yeah because it's yeah. like like i'm thinking like um sweet baby rays that's another barbecue sauce i like mm-hmm. but it's thick and sweet i like that one too roy rogers is real thin and tangy interesting interesting yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the world of sauces quick fact did you know that chick-fil-a sauce is actually ranch barbecue and honey mustard combined no yes so if you go to burger king and you get their ranch their barbecue and their honey mustard you can just stir it all together and that's chick-fil-a sauce this is amazing see you can post this on reddit and people would be like <laughs> i get some karma <laughs> you get lots of karma that's Hell awesome yeah. <laughs> okay well sweet well you know like who are you barbecue person like <laughs> <laughs> Take me back to like little Julie days. Did you oh. always know you're going to be a marketer? What did you want to be? How, what was no. it like growing up in Jersey? Oh, I love are you, Jersey. Are you like? I love Jersey. <laughs> I love it. I, I, it's like I'm a total curmudgeon. Like I love complaining about it. Like I'm like, oh, Jersey, I love it. It sucks. Like I, yeah. <laughs> that's right. why well, you, you can do that because you live there, but we all think it's that too. See, you can't knock it until you live here, and then you can knock it. Then you can knock it. <laughs> Logan on our team lived there, so he can knock it. But you're oh, right; nobody you else can. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to be a lot of different things as I grew up over the years. I wanted to have my own talk show host. There, I wanted to be a talk show host. Excuse me. There was that period. I wanted to be a scientist. I was really into weather. I was into um, rocks. I loved like archaeology and stuff like that. 
yeah, I wanted to be a comedian when I was older. I wanted to be a lawyer. I, I never had that, you know, some like your dentist is like, oh man, I wanted to be a dentist since I was 13. That I never had that call. Right. Isn't that weird? That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Kind of, it would save you a lot of trouble if you could just know, but. I wish it would have made things a lot easier, but I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, I loved art though. Because um, I was uh, I was an angsty kid, as most teenagers are, and it was a great form of expression. Yeah. And it wasn't limiting, you know. Like I could do digital art, I could do painting, photography, whatever it was. So that okay. was really where I, that was really where I think I found my voice and found like my comfort level. <clears throat> and even things I learned in like high school art. Another shout out, my uh, teacher Bill Vavona. He's the bee's knees. He's such a Bill? great guy. Bill. Bill, Bill. what's up, buddy? up bill um he i still use those things now even in marketing <clears throat> really like what? yeah oh gosh i mean especially with design but thinking creatively thinking outside the box and for example i remember a photography class i was in <clears throat> excuse me one of the one of the lessons i'll say was that you know the more you limit yourself the more you come up with parameters you actually give yourself a lot more freedom. And it sounds counterintuitive, but yeah. if you're if someone tells you, here's $10 million, be free, it's like, whoa, you know, where do I begin? It's actually kind of limiting because you don't know where to start. Right. But if someone tells you, look, you know, I don't want to be here, you can't do this, you can't do that, then it gives you, like we talked about before, it gives you these goalposts that you want to hit. It kind of helps you develop develop a narrative. It gives you confidence. Like you're like, hey, we actually can't do it this way because we had that parameter to work against. I mean, right. it's, it's a counterintuitive way to look at creativity, but limit yourself. Don't be scared to do that or give yourself parameters. And then that helps you find your roadmap. Ask for parameters. Yeah, I like that mm -hmm. idea because sometimes we're trying to free ourselves of all parameters. But to your point, then there's just like, oh, you, the sky's the limit. Oh, okay. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Too many things I could do. But but things. you're right. The restriction gives you a freedom in a way where you're – or a launching point to be able to say, okay. Yes. I could see at the beginning when you're going to tackle a – a problem or you want to do something yeah. you want to address a goal the goals right. could help limit you like okay, here's yes. a real thing is we want to get here doesn't yes. matter about all this other stuff this is the thing so exactly. that kind of focuses your swim lane a little bit yeah yeah no that's that's exactly right so i again like if you, let's say you have a tricky client you know maybe yeah. you're a consultant that person maybe they'll get on your nerves at some point down the road but they're actually doing you a great favor because right. they're telling you right off the bat like don't do any of this stuff let me save you some time and right. if you go through your plan and you find hey i actually have to do i have to sell direct to consumer like let's say that was the opposite of what they wanted but you kind of find that you have to like we said before that's valuable that's a data right. point you know yeah yeah like i can imagine like right now with us all being stuck at home and mm -hmm. having all this stuff happening where the creativity has a chance to increase like you yes. could just hang out at home and be a vampire or you could like yes. let the restrictions inspire you i mean this is i'm telling this to myself to kind of like inspire myself because i'm like oh you know i'm yes. here i am in the basement again but like hmm what how do i break out of this like what kind of Right. I, now I've really restricted. So how do I work with it? Yeah, that's a great point. Because I mean, yeah. I, if you watch the news or go online, you see so many fun videos where people are just, they're coming up with the wackiest things to pass the time or yeah. how to celebrate birthdays or, you know, morning, unfortunate things. I mean, people are getting really creative on how to solve their problems. I mean, right. you, it's, you're solving problems for yourself, you know? Right. And I think, I think that's a great example, COVID. And I have to say, I got to be better myself. You know, I haven't been as creative, but I think it's important that we as people just remind ourselves, like, it's okay to be stressed out. And I keep seeing these uh, affirmations that are so helpful. Like, if you're not going to be productive today, you, ha you have to listen to your body and that's okay. Yeah. I heard so many um, psychologists and psychiatrists on the news keep saying like, <clears throat> we are actually going through mourning right now. We're going, we're experiencing grief right now. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's a loss. 
Um, it sucks. <laughs> it, it's true. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So there's something to say for that. So people just, just let yourself do, yeah. respond to your body. And take you, care of yourself. Kind take of thing. care of yourself. Yeah. yeah exactly. And, and it's okay. Like, it's okay to give yourself, you know, downtime. It's okay. If you need to be sad for, you know, today. Yeah. For a week. Mostly not a whole week. But just take. I can tell you, a couple of weeks ago, I, is my, like, I didn't transition well into this, like, submarine basement. <laughs> you know, and I and I wasn't being intentional about getting outside, so I'd have a whole day go by. Because sometimes you get in a meeting and you just kind of go right through it. Oh God, yeah. Mm-hmm. And eat your lunch down here as well, and then I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, it's dark all the time. And then I'm like, I'm in Alaska where I don't have any sunlight or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Vegas. Like, yeah, yeah, and it's okay. <laughs> but like, I was like, okay, I'm being pretty useless right now. Like, uh, I, you know, and then eventually yeah. it's like, a, and then you're eating junk food like there's food around you like we're yeah. not starving here the supermarkets are open you know yeah, like, right 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 like, but we're cooped in so we're like not going anywhere there is this massive thing of pretzels and mm. i'm pretty sure i hate pretzels but it's like this pj's whole like this massive you know yeah, yeah. sam's club thing i finished the jar of pretzels i, I assisted my family <laughs> in eating them but i i did a good i i did a lot of the effort yeah there, yeah, yeah and yeah, I guess I like pretzels now. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm glad they're gone. I'm glad I don't have any more around me because <laughs> that's how I feel. Yeah, after I, I eat pretzels, I'm like, thank God that bag is gone. Now I can actually eat something I like. Right, but like <laughs> little bags of Doritos are just that's just torture because like it is okay. That thing's gone in like 30 seconds. I, mean, I get it's portion control, but like yep, come on, there's no, nothing to it. There's nothing to it at all. So so tell me. The art, you're the artist, you're being trained yes. and freeing your mind like Neo, yep, yep, yep. and then you go off to school, and did you pursue art there too? Yeah, so for undergrad, I went to St. John's University in Queens, New York. Cool. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, my junior year, I was able to go to the International Center of Photography and do a year there, which went to, towards my credits at St. John's, which was a great opportunity. Wow. Um, and I, I learned a lot there. Um, but one of the things I learned was uh, just authenticity, you know, so I was, you know, bright and starry eyed, ready to go in the art world. And I was, yeah. I wanted to be an artist at that time in my life. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I learned that the art world isn't any more or less sincere than the other world, what it was to me, right? Like the art world to me was this little safe haven bubble. And then there was everything else. And I learned that there's no more or less corruption in the art world than anywhere else. And I actually appreciated that the other world, I'll call it, where the normal people were, at least they were authentic for the most part. Like a shark, he'll tell you he's a shark. You know what I mean? There's no pretense there. And I felt like something was missing for me. And I also felt like, you know, who am I talking to? I I had things I wanted to say, but it was just this small little bubble. Um, Other artists kind of thing. Exactly. People not being authentic. I mean, it's just like, you know, if you're just going on talent alone, it's, it's just not easy. If you have connections, it's like anything else. It's easier if you have connections. Uh, And I didn't, I didn't, you know, and I wasn't a great networker at the time, you know, and I just, I, I didn't know how to navigate it. I just felt like I don't have enough money to pursue, you know, wanting to have a gallery opening or whatever it was. And I thought, man, fuck this. Like, I'd rather just yeah. like be with the normal people and just be true to myself and who I am and just, tr- you know, money is important. It just right. is. Like, I'm not going to pretend that it's not. I need money. I need it for my shelter. I need it to eat. I need it for lots of reasons. So I didn't want to uh, pretend that that wasn't a real concern anymore, if that right. makes sense. I could see that kind of seeping into the art itself. And then like, well, I could do this photo series, but people really like poodles. So <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate poodles. <laughs> but if I take a bunch of photos of them, I know I can get a showing at this yeah, yeah. gallery that I don't like, but I know they'll pay me. And then yes. you're like, ugh. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, this like let me just go make make money <laughs> right um, and do you still I, do that the photography and those other things i do i do yeah. and it's fun it's a heck of a lot harder though i've mm. you know i when you're younger you're just you're not really that judgmental with yourself or at least i wasn't i was like this painting it's beautiful because i made it 
right? It's weird. It was going on my fridge because I made it. Now I'm like, oh, oh God, this is crap. I'm so much more critical because that's what I had to do, right? I'm vetting creative now. So oh, as soon right. As, right? <laughs> so it's like, as soon as I see something, I see what's wrong with it instead of just a true expression. So that process is it's tension, right? It's inner tension. So yeah. it's not as easy, but um, I think it's super, super important. I think everyone, even if you think you're not creative, yeah. there's like stupid little kits that you can buy. You know what I mean? Like go to like a craft store and like paint by numbers. It's just relaxing your mind and allowing yourself to not be critical for once. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of merit in that. Yeah. I was going to say, so you, you're, you're suggesting getting a little bit out of that critical mode. Like, yeah. okay, now you're in the back in the, now you're in the business world. The critical stuff is definitely helpful, but yep. you also want to get back to one of the good things you had in the art side, which was like that non-critical, just like yeah. be the creator, just create. Yeah. And just don't self edit so much. Cause then you kind of yes. get frozen. And- exactly. Let it happen. You know, like if it's going to look like crap, let it look like crap, you know, maybe a year from now, it won't look like crap to you. I, you know, I think it's important. You always have rose colored glasses, right? Right. That happens uh, um, a lot. I like to go skydiving and like indoor skydiving. Have you ever been either of those? No, but I really want to. Hell yeah. Road trip. Hell yeah. I'll get some barbecue sauce. (laughs) We'll get some marketers together. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No barbecue sauce in the tunnel though, because it's circulating. And so Mm -mm. whatever goes up comes back around to you. Um, None of that. We'll have none of that. (laughs) So when you're learning to fly, I feel like that song is learning to fly, but um, yeah, 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 right? Foo yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're learning to fly, yeah. um, you don't have any wings. Um, no, um, it's all about finding your balance. Like your arms resist air, and your legs resist air, and you're laying flat on your belly, and you're trying to mind your legs and your arms when you don't normally need to. So you're like, oh god, I'm concentrating on my whole body, and you're yeah, everything. Um, the whole goal is just to find a little bit of a balance where your legs aren't are are, are pushing off just as much air as your arms are. You can kind of bend your arms and legs to kind of get to the point where ah, you are. And then you just float right there in the tunnel, no strings, just kind of like float right there in one spot. That's how you know you've sort of figured it out. And that's what every person, when they're first trying to do it, the the guide, the little instructors in there to like help them balance. There's like hand signals, like bend your legs, straighten your arms. And like, they're trying to help them find that that homeostasis that balance right and when you find it you're like awesome but when you're first learning to get to it sometimes people can overthink maybe entjs i don't know but sometimes you can get (laughs) really critical and be like okay arms work on my arms oh my gosh and you're really tense and then one of the hand signals in there is just this like cowabunga thing which is relaxed because Uh. if you get tense you do what they call potato chipping which is where you start like looking like a, a leaf in a blower where you just kind of like waffle back and forth in the oh. air and it doesn't feel very comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. And you're like, I feel out of control. And it's because you're so tense that you have this weird shape and the air is not happy. So you got to relax and then you sink into the air and then you get super stable. So it just kind of reminds me of like what we're talking about where you don't want to get too, you, know, you don't want to overthink things. You know, yeah. there's a time and place for that, but not the creative process, not flying, you know, relax, settle into it and just figure out what you can get. Well, yeah, definitely. And you can, you can miss opportunities that way too. For sure. Which is a big one. And this, this hilarious story of when I was um, younger and I was interning for an artist, his name was Adam Foose. Um, And he's, he's an incredible uh, contemporary artist. He was friends with like Heidi Bloom and Seal. I was like, you're who are you right now? Um, but when Did I was ever come in- over when you're like hanging out or whatever? Actually, I found out because I used to, I was an intern. So I was opening his mail and I was like, this is a wedding invitation. This was a while ago. This is a wedding invitation to Heidi and Seal's wedding. What? Wow. Yeah, I certainly got it. And he was like, oh yes, I'm, I'm friends with Heidi and Seal. I was like. Did he talk <laughs> like, like I- that too? Yeah, he was English. I really wanted. Oh, he's English. Yeah, oh, that was your English accent. Okay. That was, that was that was my Adam impression. No, he was such okay. a great guy. I I miss that cool. guy a lot. But um, we yeah, one time I was waiting for them. They were you know no one was in yet, and I was waiting to uh, get in. So I was just in the hallway, and I had my camera, and the hallway was like 
it, it didn't even look real. It was it had these like crazy long hallways. Wow. It was just all white. And there were so many fluorescent lights that they sort of just like looked like put someone put them in like haphazardly. And I was like, this is a really weird place actually now that I'm looking at it. I was taking all these pictures and all of a sudden this woman, she comes up to me and she goes, what are you taking a picture of? And I was, you know, I was like scared the shit out of me. And I was like, nothing which was true like there was just nothing everywhere I was just taking a picture and she goes well that's the best picture to take something of and I was like yeah yeah that's 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 cool and she's like do you want to take my picture and I was like who the hell is this one she was this little old lady dressed top to bottom in violet and bright purple what yeah I was like and so I thought she was a nut right so I I paused I hesitated and she goes well I'm ultraviolet and she goes too late and she whiffed around and I got a picture of the back of her head and I was like she must be somebody ultraviolet she worked in the factory with Andy Warhol (laughs) and and I and my dad knew who she was and I was so mad at myself if anyone ever tells you, do you want to take my picture? You have to say yes. You have to say yes. Ultra. Right. And then it's like, if you wait, then yes. you miss that moment. Then She's you turned around. It. You have a blur of ultraviolet and you're like, oh, that's her. And you're like, yeah, sure. I have, that's her. I have it. I, I'll give you the picture because it's so freaking funny. It is the yeah. back of this little purple beret. And it was so dark because it was fluorescent lighting, but I missed my opportunity to have like a nice conversation with uh, someone who collaborated with Andy Warhol. And, <laughs> and I just Googled her, Isabel Colin Fresney or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. she's wearing purple. Yep. Everywhere. That's her. I mean, I should have known better. It was an artist gallery, you know. Who knows? Who, <laughs> right. Yeah, like, right. But uh, so don't you know? Don't miss opportunities like right. that. Right. Overthinking things. <laughs> don't and... overthink. Yeah. Don't yeah. judge. Don't judge people either. How did you get into marketing from all that? Because it sounds yeah. like a crazy adventure. Yeah. So it was. So um, I. Like a lot of people, I was really inspired by the Dove Real Beauty campaign. Hmm. That came out in 2004 around, but I paid attention to it in my 20s. Um, And I don't know if you remember it, but it was just, we saw different bodies really for like the first time. Different skin colors, different body shapes, uh, different backgrounds, different accents. You know, it was just for the first time, you didn't see the skinny blonde woman selling, you know, bar soap. And it was nice, you know, and I thought, golly, like that marketing really made me feel good. You know, it made me feel like I don't have to look a certain way. And I feel like I have something to say. So instead of just talking to artists who aren't listening, I want to talk to everyone. And that's really what made me get into the idea of marketing. Um, so I was fascinated by it. Um, so was I, that campaign? Like it- yeah, it was that campaign, the real as, beauty. As just a consumer, you just saw the campaign as a consumer and that kind of got you really thinking. You're like, yeah. wow. Yeah, and it's funny because I've I've heard a few other women say the same exact thing. So there there's some truth to it. It really had a very lasting impact and a healthy impact. Um, and so I knew that I wanted to do marketing. I always wanted to go to NYU. That was on my, um, on my bucket list. Yeah. And um, you know, it was important to me. So I figured, you know what, why not? I'm, I'm going to do it. I want to further my education. I'm going to get my master's. I got into NYU, thank God, because I didn't have a backup plan. Right. And There's I no just, plan B, so yeah. this better work. <laughs> I didn't apply to any other school because I, yeah. I worked really hard. So like I figured out what I wanted to do. I didn't know what the job title was, but I knew like vaguely what I wanted to do. So I Googled that and I Googled what that job was. And then I Googled people with that job and then I Googled what schools and programs would foster that path. Okay. So actually, a lot of research went into it. Um, so yeah, thank God I got into NYU. And uh, I started interning. Um, I worked at um, a small marketing boutique called Spiderweb Studio. Um, yeah owned by Rose Fitzgerald, another shout out. She's fantastic. And her and I still work together uh, at Spencer Trask. She's a a vendor of ours, which is awesome. Um, And really that was it. I fell in love. It was, 
you know, what we talked about earlier, I didn't know what I wanted to do, right? Because right. I was, I loved so many different things. To me, that was a positive thing. I love so many different things. Agreed. Yep. So I was like, marketing, you could be creative or you could totally not. You could be just analytic, you know? Yeah. So I felt like, and there's so many different channels to work with. There's content, there's SEO, there's website, there's design. There I just, really yeah. I felt like a whole new world was opened up to me. Um, and again, you know, it's all, it's database, you know, there's really no reason not to dive in head first. Right. So, I mean, that, the, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. And so now you're just crushing your marketing game and, um, taking no prisoners here. Here's a <laughs> hypothetical for you. Yes. Um, and you know, you, you can analyze, but not too quickly. Cause then I'll turn around and my pink hair will be uh, gone. Um, <laughs> people like yeah, pink hair. Yeah. Yeah. Go check out a YouTube channel. It's on there. Um, oh. <laughs> um, people can't because most people are listening to this but we do do video you know yeah who wants to see us both laugh and be silly yeah yeah see how many times i drink water um, <laughs> or cough um so hypothetical i may or may not have a time machine in nashua new hampshire mm. and you can't visit now because of all the quarantining but let's say that gets better i have a time machine you come visit you can use it for a little bit to go back in time to the beginning of your career. You, this could be um, when you graduated undergrad. Um, it could be any really point in time. Like, where would you go? When would you go? And what would you tell yourself? Like, you just talk to yourself. Mm. And what would you say? What would you advise yourself having experienced everything you've gone through and all the different things you've tried and ultraviolet and all, <laughs> all these people? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. What, would you, what would you tell yourself? Um, I tell myself what I tell my mentees all the time, and that is to slow your roll. Um, and basically what I mean by that is, you know, when I got out of, well, undergrad too, but when I got out of uh, grad school, I was like raring to go. Yeah. I wanted to be, I wanted to be someone's boss already. I, like I uh, wanted to be at the top of the company already. I know nothing, but I want to order people around. Yes, I know nothing. And I want it all. And I want it all now. Like right. I just I had so much energy and so much passion and I just, I believed in myself and I knew I could do it, that I just went, I, I left. And, you know, when you do that, you miss a lot of important lessons along the way, you know, and you, your ears aren't as open to listen to others. That's another thing. Right. You really, really have to, when you first go anywhere, I mean, even this, even if you're, you know, you're 60 and you're work in a new job, whatever yeah. it is, you really just have to observe like the first mm. few months, just observe, don't change anything. Don't request to change anything. Wow. Learn the rules. Um, and I, I, it's, I've lived it. So I, I, I know exactly where that's coming from, but I've also read that in um, Robert Greene's book, Mastery. Like the, you just, What's there's a, Robert? Mastery by Master. Robert Greene. Oh, it's a great book. I I like a lot of how tos and self help. So yeah, it's a, no, it's dry. It's That's mastery. really cool. mastery. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, don't don't uh, rush things. And in mastery, he says mastering any craft to become a master takes ten thousand hours. Oh, is that where that ten thousand hours comes from? It's from yes. 10,000 oh, cool. hours. Um, so you can't rush that and you don't want to fabricate that because then when you're the boss, whenever that time is, you have to know your shit. Right. You can't just, you know, see, fake it till you make it only work so long. <laughs> right. You know? right. So that's why I'd say like, if you're just starting out in your career, slow down, listen, observe, take notes. And then once you kind of have a lay of the land, do what you think is best. Yeah, it's like that whole <laughs> it's like that whole measure twice, cut once. Yes. Listen, you have two ears and one mouth, do twice as much listening. I it's so important, right? To yes. not come swoop into a place and you know, have the humility to say, I may have experiences or not, but either way I'm gonna listen and observe. Um, that's the best way to take over a new role. Yeah. Um, whether yep. it's you know, someone was there or not before you is just to observe. Yeah, and once you know you've done you've done that, you can break stuff and you can yes exactly and go go to town, smash everything. But yes, just before you just come in smashing, you gotta just observe. You know, go yes, to China exactly. shop, sit in the corner, watch how they do business. An hour later, a week later, whatever time you need, then you start smashing the status quo and make it better. And that kind yeah. of that's smart because sometimes yeah. I don't do that, and I'll just come in like 
let's rearrange. And you're like, well, yeah. maybe you could be breaking something that is actually working and you're just wasting oh, yeah. your time. Exactly. I honestly, that is the most important lesson I've ever learned in my life. And I, and I take it with me every single day. And I mean, even engaging with a new client, right? If yeah. I, we had a client in the uh, healthcare space and he did a new website and I was like, oh man, I want to make this so much better. I'm going to reorganize the content and yeah. rewrite it and simplify it. It's too, too, whatever it was, um, too high science. I gave this beautiful website. Oh God, it's totally different. No, 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 no. We, we need the content to be completely intact. We just need to change the skin. That was a big lesson for me. You know, you can't right. just tear things down. People work decades sometimes to put these rules in place. You can't think that you know better than someone else. So the next website I delivered was just a smarter organization of verbatim copy. And mm. it's a fly now. It still is. And that was probably my favorite project because I, I had to do a lot of soul searching. You know, right. you really have to figure, you have to listen. Um, so d that's <laughs> the key advice. You know, that's, that's good though. Like you, there's again, the humility. And like you said, you know, they've been working on this for a while. Yeah. Sometimes I have the tendency to prefer things that are smashed and new, but you're right. Some things have been perfected and if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yep. Spend your, you know, baseball bat energy on the things that maybe should be updated, but you won't really know until you observe. Yes. Observe, but also ask, like, why do we do this? Maybe there's a good right. reason. Yeah. yeah. You know, it would be kick-ass for a new manager coming in, um, maybe observing for two weeks, a month, whatever it is, and then having an, an all-hands call. Yeah. Hey, guys, what's not working for you? What do you want from me? How can I make your jobs easier? Right. I mean, even like just having that dialogue, let's say you don't use anything. Right? That would never happen. But let's say you don't use anything. People at least feel heard. And there's value in that too. Yeah. yeah, that's that's an important one. Yeah. And and like you were saying before, decades, sometimes decades people are doing this. You can't think that you know better. You know, Reddit, you feel heard. Listening, people are feeling heard. I think there's some magic to to helping people feel heard because I don't yes. I think there's a there's a lot of people trying to get your attention, but there's not a lot of people listening to you and yeah. understanding you. Um yeah, no, that's a great point. It. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Craziness. Well, we're, you know, I would, I would be, I would be upset if I let you get out of here without giving me some tips on the sci-fi reading you've been doing because you were, we, there's nothing but reading time, and you got some <laughs> movies from me, so I know you, you're big into the science fiction books. Any favorites yes. that I should check out? Um. So I also like like cornier sci-fi too. And I read this book. It's called it's called Dark Matter. And I forget the I forget the author, but if you Google it, you can probably find it. It's a newer Blake book. Crouch. Yes, yes, yes. Dark Matter. That one is uh super, super cool. Um okay. and I also have been getting into HG Wells, kicking it old school. Uh, no kidding. So the time machines are up the alley then. That's cool. Time Machine, I actually, I never read Time Machine before, which is nonsense. People read it. It's like a I pamphlet. It's a pamphlet. It was a movie for me. Oh, it's a pamphlet? It's a pamphlet. It's, it's a book, but that's okay. a Curb Your Enthusiasm reference. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, I haven't seen that either, so maybe I need to catch up on that. Oh, my God. You have to watch Curb. Yeah, there's a, yeah, um, uh, Jason. That. Jason Alexander writes a book and Larry David's like, that's not a book. That's a pamphlet. The time machine's really like a pamphlet. Cause it's like only 80 pages or even less. Right. So no excuse. It's, yeah. It's a good one. Um, but War of the worlds I've been reading again. I have like those, uh, you know, those Barnes and Noble books that you get, they're like 20 bucks, but they're awesome. I have a couple different sci-fi ones that I've been 20 packing. bucks. Yeah. They're like really cheap. That's cheap. Yeah. Well, they're like, it's like seven different books. Oh, oh, they're like, there's many books. Anthologies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. Do they have like a fancy cover? Because that's where the 20 bucks goes to. <laughs> that's all. And the promotion. If it was paperback, it would be like seven ninety five. dollars exactly. In the used bookstore. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I get it. Right. If it's several books, then $20 is probably like a $2 book. Yeah. Well, and if you're OCD like me, it's nice having the same type of book across your shelves. Now you're really getting to know me. Oh, really? Do you? <laughs> Are they like all the same brand kind of thing? Yeah. Like I have 
any older books that I had, like a Charles Dickens books, I got yeah. the new Barnes and Noble so that it looks like nice and neat and tidy. Wow, right. I get it. Nope, totally. That E is, <laughs> is tiny through. So it's so tiny through. My thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I used to be kind of like poo-pooing on uh, Myers Briggs because it, it was kind of like either or, like Boolean, like you're either mm. this or this. Yeah. What about if you're in betweeny? And yeah, yeah. Um, and I am. And so. Um, but they tricked me to taking it again because it's like 16personalities.com is yes. the new Myers-Briggs and they've rebranded and that's how they got me. And so I did the thing and it's like, you're this, this, this. But I think for one of my things versus like yes. feeling versus thinking, yeah, I'm yeah. like 51% feeling. But that doesn't necessarily – puts me right in the middle, which means I'm also like 49% thinking. So when I go mm-hmm. and I look at who I – my test at looks like it's like this super fun person who doesn't think at all and is like life is good and flowers and then and I'm like yeah but I'm not I wish I was that person but unfortunately I had that 49 percent who's like yeah. mm, but is that really the case you know? <laughs> yeah, right right ah, ah. that's hilarious but, but I have to go find my my like-minded people on reddit now please do I'm telling you it'll be hilarious like the things that they're anxious about I'm like I just thought I was like a dork but well, right. apparently there's like millions of other people on this planet like that and i think your personality can change too you know? oh for sure it can yeah. yeah for sure have you heard of um colby colby k-o-l-b-e i don't think so colby is like different than personality it's actually actually your instincts your cognitive instincts there's mm-hmm. personality intelligence and instincts and your your iq can change and your intelligence and experience can change personality is your wants and desires that can change but your cognitive instincts which is how you actually attack problems apparently never changes and mm-hmm. so i've taken personality tests that change disc changes and all sorts of yeah yeah even strength finders change which yep. blows your mind but then um, colby ne- has never changed and they've been studying it for 30 years now they took they had this university test people on the regular they mm-hmm. had them take it 30 years ago and they keep testing them and they and they're wow. the same Oh, I love that. Yes, That's you should awesome. check it out. And, it, and it, instead of being like, oh, I, I like to talk to people, I like this stuff that you can kind of figure out from just talking to someone usually, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. more a matter of when the shit goes down and you've never had this challenge before, what are you going to do? Mm. What, what's your, how are you going to attack the problem? Are you going to do a bunch of research or not a lot of research at all? Are you going to make a huge plan or not a huge plan at all? Are you going to just – pull the trigger and see what happens and try another idea, come up with a bunch of ideas and just start trying them. Or are you going to start building things? And so yeah. there's different scales for each person. And That's it's really cool. interesting. Yeah. We can talk more about it later, but like Colby is definitely one of those things that I'm a huge fan of. That's awesome. I'm, I'm writing that down. I'm going to check that out actually. Yeah. That's yeah. It's 50 okay. bucks, but it, it ends up being well spent because it doesn't change. So you don't have to take it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? that's true. Um, and, and also it helps you understand, um, I called me my wife right away yeah. um, afterward. I called <laughs> yeah. me people on the team because yeah. if you're four more different, because the numbers you get are like one to 10. If you're four more different on one of the numbers, the other person looks crazy to you. You're like, how do you even exist on this planet? The oh, way you do wow. things. And they're not crazy. They're not deficient in anything. They're just, they attack problems in a different way. Some people like will do a bunch of research, right? Some people yeah. won't. And it doesn't, mean you shouldn't do the research you should have someone on your team who loves doing the research do yes. the research. that's and right. like some people like to brainstorm some people don't and it doesn't and that's like their approach and so it's like oh we need to brainstorm here let's get the people who that's their go-to strength that's their colby strength let's get them uh, to brainstorm we need people to do research let's go get the researchers yeah. with the planners sometimes it's neither of those other people we need the planning focused people they do the planning so it helps yeah. people just gives people permission to play into their strengths Oh, that is so great. That sounds like a great tool for managers. Oh, yeah. You could be your team. Yeah. Then you give them permission to be themselves because sometimes what happens is you're like, uh, let's say you're not a planner and you're forced to be a, a planner. Well, you would know, okay, maybe I shouldn't go be a project manager at this company, right? Like that's not yeah. really the role for me. Or um, they want you to be a salesperson, but you really should be a project manager. Like right. sometimes the job asks you to do something that isn't really your strength. And if that's the case, the, the more different, because you can actually take a Colby for the jo- what the job needs. It's called a uh, Colby B. It's an A index and a B. The B is for what the job asks of you. And you can, you can, um, you can fill it out as the person in the job. Yeah. Colby C is your manager looking down at the job or across at the job going, what does this job require? So a B and a C tell you what your expectations are of the role, 
And then wow. your A is what you are. And yeah. then you see if it fits it. Not to be like, oh, let's get rid of these people. It's like, no, let's find them the thing that they really love doing and which is their strength, because they'll do it all day. It won't feel like work. But if you're out of your Colby strengths, it'll feel like work. It'll feel ugh, it'll feel people yeah. will usually leave their jobs or get fired if they're in the wrong Colby. Oh God, that is so yeah. cool. And we we talked about having a an all hands call if you're yeah. new. What a great activity that oh, would be. Totally. Right. Or even a follow-up email, guys, check it out. Let me know what you are. And then who knows? I mean, if you have, if you're able to do that, if you're a small enough team and you can sort of switch roles on the fly, I mean, that could uh, retain uh, employees better. You know what I mean? For sure. That is awesome. We've had that where if you have a salesperson and you find out, by the way, if you, if you fill it out, um, you can't game it, right? You can't try, you tr- can't try to fake it. You got to tell people, look, this is, this is not a, like for a bonus. You're not going to get fired. Right. This is to help you find you, which sometimes people don't understand. Really? You're just doing this in goodness of your heart. Yeah. Because we want you to be in your happy zone. <laughs> that means you're going to be like doing fun instead of work. Yeah. So, but if they, if they, you can act, you can fill it out. If you're confused, like if the world is asking you, to not plan and to adapt left and right, yet you just always want to plan, but you never have time to do it. Mm. Your answers will show up on that thing. And it knows that and they, and they, you're in conflict. Um, they call it transition. And you get a result with a star that says like, none of the, and basically the whole result doesn't matter. You have to take it again, but you need some coaching first. Because what it means is like mm. someone, either parents, society, job, right. family is asking you to be something that you're not. And yeah. so when you're answering this thing, you're like, oh, I don't want to plan at all. Oh, but I need to plan. And it shows up that like you keep answering in the opposite ends of the spectrum and mm-hmm. it called and it flags the area that you're doing it so that you can kind of work through it. And, we, and we've had conversations with people where like a salesperson was a super planner and mm-hmm. yet the work was telling them to adapt left and right. And they're yep. like, but I want to, I, I plan out my whole day by the hour like I want to do that but I need to adapt so we're like okay how can you you know how can you plan for this presentation could go this way or this way make a plan for it like so it doesn't mean you can't do that job it just means you need to approach in a different way but the manager can then work with them to say well how can we how can we work on this here yeah that's another great point that's yeah. a great point because it's like you know just because that's you'll have weaknesses that you want to be strengths Right. So make your role work for you. And I, I think people right. people need to hear that to empower themselves to your point earlier. You know, it's okay. It's okay that something's right. not working for you. What's not okay is if you don't say it. Because we yeah, can't do fix something it. about it, right? Yeah, exactly. Just sit there and hate your job or like hate what you're doing and <laughs> right, it's right. Like, oh you know, but this also explains it because when you finish the test, Kathy Colby, who wears purple, that's her favorite color too. Um oh. Full circle. She, come, she comes on, I know, with a little video and she goes, you have a perfect Colby score. And it's like silly and funny, but she says yeah. it to everyone, but it's true. Yeah. There is no like, you're deficient in this, you're more of this, because you do need people that can adapt and you do need people that can plan. Certain yeah. tasks and jobs and situations require the adapter. Shit's going down, quick, we need the adapters. Let's get, let's get on board and let's change everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we're about to do this huge marketing campaign. Let's plan like you were talking about, right? Yep, so yep. all of that's needed at the right time and place. And so you're just telling people, hey, be you. I'm cool with it. Yeah. And it all starts with like you doing it. You do it and make sure you're doing the role and you're in the position. And then it, it mm-hmm. I don't say it trickles down, but like you show them like, look, I did it first. I found out I was in conflict here and here. Um, yeah. And, and that's, this is how I'm working to fix it. Let's work on you now. Right. And you kind of like share the lesson down. I love stuff like, like I'm telling you, as soon as we hop off, I am going to spend $50 and buy that. Cause that is so cool. You're welcome, Colby. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Right. There's your little ad going by. Right. You should sponsor this. Hey, you should sponsor this Colby. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Yeah, Colby. Um, Come on. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> uh, it's it's cool. It's really cool. I just I like learning about people's specialties, and and sure enough, my wife is actually the exact opposite Colby that I have, which makes uh, sense in a way. Cause you're yeah, like, totally. Huh? Yeah, like I don't have anything in that column or anything in that area, and that she does. And so at least as a unit, you can then adapt and approach things in different ways. You know? Yeah. Oh my. Well, also I think with relationships, it's so important. I, I got married a year and a half ago or so. Hey. And, hey, and 
it's taught me so much about communication. Yeah. You know, I think relationships, they, <laughs> this is a total ENTJ. It's because ENTJs, they're notorious for uh, not really understanding emotions and they always try to have a takeaway or always try to make something logical. So oh. it makes sense that I think of it this way, but a lot, a lot of my personal relationships, if there's ever a conflict, I always try to I always try to, and this is my style, be asked very forward questions so I can figure out what my style is because I know if I'm doing something wrong with a friend or a family member, I'm for sure doing that same communication oh, yeah. messed up on the job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. It's communication styles. It's just realizing that people have strengths and leveraging them and they're not, yes. they're not deficiencies. They're actually no. benefits. Like, oh, instead of being like, oh, we're the same, Colby, you don't want that. You actually want and um i mean it'd be interesting uh, yeah no one here plans we just roll with it but it's cool having the other side because then at least that way someone plans you know or yes. someone you know has the ideas and whatnot so. Yeah. And one of my uh, classes at NYU, we had a group project. It was called Mixed Media. Um, and we had to uh, come up with a product and come up with a media plan for the product. So pretty okay. simple. Um, but we picked our own groups. And it was like one person picks another person, then they pick the next type of dealio. Um, and I remember that the professor said, don't pick someone that you like necessarily for their personality. Pick, so pick someone who is couldn't be more different to you. And I, t I took that to heart because I was paying a lot of money for that advice. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so I remember picking out this person and her and I and the group at large worked so well together. Really? And we ended up being friends after that. And, you know, maybe we wouldn't have because I would have thought her and I weren't compatible. So it, that lesson has brought me through life wherever I think, I don't know if I'd get along with that person. I usually end up getting along with them the best because they're so different. What, what was different about that person? Do you remember what stood out about them that made you pick them? Yeah, she, she was very quiet, very, very thoughtful. Um, like when I, if someone asked me a question, I would have like a block answer and hers would be a lot more long form and she'd oh use bigger, God. prettier words, a little bit more descriptive. Um, and it would almost like, I didn't have patience for it. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, God, like, what are you, are you writing a poem or are you answering a question? Right. Yeah. But it actually turned out that there was something to that more long form thought process, right? It's not black or white. There's shades of gray. So yeah, I, that's a good question, though. It's true. What was she so different? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's something, because when you mentioned that kind of, I mean, I have a couple of close friends that remind me, like, they're just, like, quiet and chill. And, yes. And, but I just love spending time with them, and I feel like they listen too much, because, like, <laughs> I talk, and then they listen, so I try to make it, like, a point to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. try to get them to talk so that I can yes. listen, but they don't yes. necessarily want to. No. And they're just fine with me talking, but it's, it's cool when you have that kind of, it's almost like and you seek those people out, but sometimes other than on, on Reddit, mm -hmm. people who are so much similar to you, you, sometimes you're like, I don't, you're either jealous of them because they're doing yeah. a better job than you are, or yeah. they annoy you because you're like, oh, you talk so much. And you're like, you probably That's, do the same thing. Yeah. Is. yeah. You see like the things, oftentimes the thing that you hate in someone else you're it's actually something in yourself that you totally. despise yeah totally. like oh, they talk too much this is so ridiculous you're like i secretly hate how much i talk or so you, yeah you're yes. just kind of projecting that on them and, yeah you are and then you turn them into a caricature which is awful oh well, yeah well this yeah. becomes a psych podcast <laughs> this is total it's Hell philosophy yeah. and psych yeah, yeah. <laughs> marketing speaking of marketing and psych podcast well okay. here's a question where can people connect with you on Reach out, linkedin linkedin yeah okay definitely on linkedin um my website isn't up yet um but definitely check it out julie falsitano um on linkedin.com very easy to find okay. um yeah i mean that's no no tw no tweets no twitters gram how about instagram are you on insta are you on insta <laughs> Are you on TikTok? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any of those fun things. I'm so sorry. Have you I mean, ever I have done a TikTok? I haven't. I haven't either. I feel like I need to though, so I can be part of society. You're, it's a waste. Let me tell you, because I thought the same thing about Snapchat. Like I was like, I did too. I had it for a day. 
Yeah. I was like, I have to be on Snapchat because I feel bizarre. I feel weird having a technology that I'm unfamiliar with. It made me yeah. uncomfortable with, you know what I mean? Yeah, Especially totally. marketers, B2B even, you still want to know like different social channels. And I had it, I had it for maybe like a year and then everyone left, everyone left me. And then I was yeah. all alone on Snapchat, which is literally no fun. Exactly. <laughs> no fun. No fun. Yeah. <laughs> Our babysitter at the time had it, and that was like her primary mode of communication. And so, so weird. I, would, I remember that. Right? Like, that was people's way of like, yeah. uh, it's a so message. I, but I would ask her, hey, are you available that night mm-hmm. um, so we could go on a date or something? Um, mm-hmm. Not the babysitter, my wife. <laughs> it um, was a little ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> I need to clarify. <laughs> um, I'd be like, hey, are you free on Thursday at like six or something? Yeah. Um, Snapchat erases it, and then she yes. writes back, yeah, I'm totally free. Uh, I'll be there then. And you're like, shit. What, what did, did I, I what say? Day, what time did I ask her to be there? Uh, what day did I ask oh you? And then she God. doesn't know because it's gone there too, right? So it's yes. Like- yes, I used to do that with my friends. Like, I would type something long, God only knows, and then like one week later, I'd get it. I would see it one week later, and it would be like, LOL, yeah. And I'd be like, I can't. I don't cons- even know. I don't yeah. even know. Was I was I tipsy when I texted you? Like, it, it's so many different things could have happened. <laughs> I have no idea. Seriously, I you should get it. on Instagram though. Yeah, I should. That's, that's all photos. I know. I, and only good photos, and they're even filtered. You can yeah. you can be like, I'm a photography major, like <laughs> hashtag no filter. But um, yeah, yeah that like, would put, be me. You should put Violet up there, and and yeah. um, I kind of like it because it's this more pure form. You can't put links. There's no URLs in Instagram. The only exactly. URL is in your profile. And so people are like, hey, check out this blah, blah, blah. Links in my profile. But you have to keep changing your URL, which is punishing them for yes. trying to advertise. And so they just put up pictures. and Yeah. Yeah. I like well, it. I, ha- I had it when I was younger. Oh, you did? Yeah. And I got, I don't, I honestly don't remember why I got rid of it. I'm struggling to think. But I'll get back at it. Why you not? It, it's like the visual thing. I think totally and i have all these yeah. photos in my phone i could have a field day yeah for sure yeah. for sure well thank you so much for coming on here i don't know if you looked at thank the time you. it just flew by what <laughs> right you haven't seen it since then that's no. awesome. this is your actual reaction that's that's really cool oh my god right? i thought it was gonna be three thirty. no <laughs> Time flies, man. I'm so sorry to take all your time. No, this is fun. This is totally fun. This might this even be our longest time. podcast ever, which is a record and a testament to all the things I've learned from you and everything. So <laughs> Likewise. Freaking cool. Yeah. Um, for those listening, uh-huh. if you've learned something, and I know we talked about a lot of goofy things like barbecue sauce, but I know we also talked about a lot of marketing because I literally have two pages of notes over here. Okay. So awesome. I learned something and I know you did. So I, did I hope you all did. And if you did share this with someone else, be a thought leader to one person or two or 47 or 58 or 109. Just share this with people, LinkedIn, whatever. And I uh, get the message out. The things that we're talking about, things that Julie's sharing about planning, and slowing your role to listen. This is good stuff. So yeah. share this with people. And again, Julie, thank you so much for being on here. I feel like we're BFFs now. Me and too. Have you come back on here and go for like yes. nine hours. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. I don't know how the time flew like that. That's ridiculous. And I don't <laughs> know how you don't have your own podcast yet. We will work on you. We will get you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For everyone listening, this has been the Hardcore Marketing Show. We will catch you all next time. All right. A big thank you to today's sponsors. Cheshire Impact, helping marketers and sales win, maximizing the use of Pardot and Salesforce. And a big thank you to Qualified.com, the number one live chat and chat bot platform for Salesforce and Pardot. Remember the giveaway. If you have Salesforce Pardot and you want a free copy of my book, Marketing Automation Unleashed, then you go over to Qualified.com, engage in a chat, do a demo, and tell them that Casey sent you, and that book will be on its way to your door. All right, we'll see you all in the next one.